Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint Frank Horrigan, a fan favourite character from the Fallout universe for Fallout Wasteland Warfare by Modiphius Entertainment. Now this character originally appeared in Fallout 2, which was, well, a game that came out quite a long time ago, but here Modiphius have really modernised the character to bring it up to speed with the more modern Fallout games by adding lots of detail to the armour and other areas on the figure. Now in this video we are of course going to show you how to paint the entire thing, really focusing on painting that slightly corroded weathered armour, but also the really horrible mutant green skin and the detail on the base as well. And it's worth noting that you can take the techniques that we're going to be using here and apply them to lots of other different things. And in Fallout that includes the Enclave and Super Mutants, but also you could use it in other games too. For example with Warhammer 40,000 you could use the green to paint orc skin, you could use the metal on their vehicles, you could even paint Chaos Space Marines of the Iron Warriors using these techniques. So we hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you at the desk. To paint Frank Horrigan, the first thing that you need to do is to undercoat your miniature. And for this one, I'd recommend a medium grey. So I've gone for Mechanica Standard Grey from Citadel. And the first thing that we're going to do is to paint all of his armour and also the weapons at the same time with silver. Now the colour I'm going to use here is Lead Belcher from Citadel. And at this stage, there's actually a very good argument for undercoating the model with Lead Belcher Silver Spray. Now bear in mind, if you choose to do so, you're going to get a different texture on the armour because by base coating it by hand, what I'm going to get is a slightly rough texture, which later on when we apply some wash onto the miniature, this wash will adhere to that texture and give a particular effect on it. Now if you spray the miniature with lead belcher instead, what you'll get is a much smoother surface and you'll find the wash will tend to run off it much easier and you'll get a different result in the end. So if you do spray the model with silver, it's important you still do this first step and make sure you paint all the armour and all the weapons using lead belcher. Anyway, to do that, what you need to do is to get hold of an older brush that's good at base coating large areas quickly. And that's exactly what I've got here. Good old medium base brush from Citadel that you can see has certainly seen better days, but for this purpose, it's perfect. And all we've got to do is get some of this paint onto the palette as ever, thin it down with that little touch of water. So just being careful not to overdo it with a brush like this. There we go. And once you load it up, all you've got to do is start painting those details. So don't worry about any of the finer details at this stage. Just make sure that you get all of the armour and the weapons. And just to be sure to cover all of it, if you see in the undercoat showing through, just be sure to apply it as two thin coats. Once you finish base coating all those details using that silver, the next thing to do is to clean your water, because at this stage there's going to be a lot of metal floating around in there and it will contaminate your other colours if you don't get rid of it. So make sure you've got some fresh water now, and then we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to start to base coat some of the finer details on the miniature before we wash it. So for this, first of all, what we need to do is to pick out some parts that are going to be a near black using a near black. And so for this, I'm going to be using Corvus Black. But then after that, what we need to do is pick out some small details with brass, and for this I'm going to use some Balthazar Gold. But first of all, I'm going to use Corpus Black, and really for this, any sort of really dark grey or close to black will do. This one's a great colour though, because it's got really nice coverage. And all you need is a medium sized brush to apply it. So I'm using a regiment brush here from Army Painter, and I'm using Wet Palette 2 to get the paint nicely thinned down with just that touch of water as ever, so it's under control. And then with this, what we're looking for first of all is the body glove that's underneath the armour plating. So for example, on the knee just here, you can see it visible on the joint. All you've got to do is block in this area, just making sure that you work around that armour just taking your time to access all those parts. In addition, look for any large cables on the miniature too and base coat them as well. So for example, these ones we've got up here on the head. Once that's done, you're then ready to move on to a bronze. And here I'm using some Balthazar gold. And the most important detail here is the mouthpiece, of which we just need to block in the entire thing just there. But in addition, if you want to use this colour to break up some large areas of silver, it's a really great choice to go for. So for example, on the backpack here, we've got the nuclear reactor. This is a great place just to pick out a few details. I finished picking out some details in brass, and you can see I decided to add a few on the gun there, as well as those details on the backpack. And with that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is to wash the miniature. And we can wash everything at the same time here with a dark brown wash, because what we're looking for is a kind of weather-worn, corroded appearance to the armour. And so the first step of that is to wash all over it. And for this, I'm going to be using some Agrax Earth Shade, although you could use Strong Tone from the Army Painter if you prefer. Whatever you choose, you need to apply it all across the miniature. And this is where it's so important about the texture of the metal, as you'll see in a moment. So to apply it, you need to go for a large brush, I'm using a monster brush here from Army Painter, and I'm actually going to apply this straight out the pot because I want to put on plenty here. So I'm just going to load up with a good amount, 
And it's just a matter of picking a starting point, for example, on the leg and just painting it on like this. So it runs into all that recess detail. All you've got to do is keep moving it around the miniature, making sure you get it everywhere into all those nooks and crannies as you go along. So be sure to apply plenty. And also be sure to protect your work surface at this point because some of this likely will drip off the miniature. Now you can see as I apply it, it's staying more or less where I'm putting it because that's that texture from the metal armor. If I just sprayed it silver and left it like that, this will be all be running a lot and really collecting around the feet and starting to drip off the model, which is why that initial painting is silver is so important. However, because I am applying a lot of this onto the miniature, you can see it will start to collect in certain areas. So you need to keep an eye out for that as it settles and as it starts to dry. So for example, if you see it starting to behave kind of like this around that foot and really swamping it, just move away the excess before it dries. Just use your brush like a sponge, just poke it around like that. You're looking for it to be a little bit more like that before you move on. Now, because we're applying quite a lot here, it will take a bit of time to dry. So be sure to leave the miniature for at least 45 minutes before you move on to the next step. Once that coat is completely dry, you're then ready to apply a second coat of Agrax Earth Shade painted on in the exact same way. Now this is going to darken down the armour quite a bit, but don't worry about it, we are going to brighten things up later on. But as before, just be sure to keep an eye out for it pooling anywhere and be sure to give it plenty of time to dry. Now this is going to really darken down the armour and make it appear really grimy, which is absolutely perfect for the end result. That second coat of wash is now completely dry and you can see it's really darkened down the model a lot, which is perfect for that kind of grimy appearance that we want to have on the armor. But before we do anything to start to brighten it up, what we need to do is pick out some detail on the weapons and that's what we're gonna do now. And for this, we need a slightly lighter silver than lead belcher. So for this, I'm gonna use some iron hand steel. And then after that, we need to wash these areas with black. So I'm gonna use some normal oil for this. Now, first of all, we need iron hand steel and to apply this, I'm going to be using my regiment brush. So a medium sized brushes to go for here. And all we've got to do with this is pick out some areas of the weapons that we want to be brighter. And the most obvious example here is of course going to be the blade of his knife. So I'm going to start out by base coating that. All we've got to do is block out the entire thing. So it's just a matter of painting all of it along here, going all the way up to the housing at the top, just there. Now on the weapon, this is for any parts that you want to be a little bit brighter to break it up a bit. So this is going to be things such as the barrel of the gun around about here, but it's really entirely up to you which parts you pick out at this stage. Once you finish picking out those details and that brighter silver, you're then ready to apply a black wash over the top of them. So for this, I'm using Norn Oil and it's just a matter of applying it all across the blade of the knife. So all the way down here to coat the entire thing. And then on the gun, we're looking to do all of it. So that includes all the casing around here to make it a little bit darker than the rest of the armor. Once the wash and the weapons is completely dry as well, we're then ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be to kind of brighten up that arm a little bit and re-establish the mid-tone. But rather than layering this, what we're going to do is dry brush it on using a kind of buffing motion to get the beaten metal appearance. It's great for a weathering effect like this. Now what you need to do is return to your original silver, so it's back to lead belcher for this. And to apply it, go for a small dry brush. And I'm specifically using one from Citadel here because these bristles are nice and soft, so really good for this kind of technique. And all you've got to do is get a small amount onto the brush, then get some tissue and just work it into the bristles and get rid of most the paint and we're looking to be left with only a very small amount left on the brush. Now if you notice the motion I'm doing here getting rid of the excess, I'm doing what I'm actually going to be doing on the model. I'm actually going in a rounded motion like this and I'm just seeing what it's doing to the texture of the tissue. When you got down to about that kind of point there where it's very subtle, then you're ready to start applying it to the miniature. And what you do is that rounded motion like I was doing. So for example, if I start on the shoulder here, I'm just going to start approaching it like this, going round and round and round. And the more I do this, you can see the more silver gets onto there and it starts to brighten it up. And so by doing it like this, I can control how bright that silver is going to be. It's going to keep going at it like that. So I start to get that beaten appearance. And there we go. So you see, really, it's just a matter of doing this across all the armor until you're happy with it. Now, as you can see, it's a bit tricky to control it when you get towards finer details. So when you get to the undersuit, for example, around here, you're probably going to catch some of that body glove. But don't worry about it because we will neaten that up later on. I finished building up that color on the armor with that buffing technique, and you can see the result of that really nice weather-worn appearance on the metal. And with that done, we can now move on to neatening up these parts of the bodysuit because some of those will have caught some silver. So what we need to do is return to the original color for those, which is corvus black, and layer it onto those parts. So to apply this, I'm going to be using a small brush. I've actually got a small layer brush from Citadel, and all I'm going to do is get a little bit ready on my palette, thin down with a touch of water so I've got control over where it's going. And with this, what I'm looking to do is to paint onto the flat parts of these details whilst avoiding the recesses because we want them to stay darker from all that wash we applied earlier. So a great example is on the knee because we've got kind of ridges on here. What I'm looking to do with this is just to paint it onto the raised parts of it. So along there, 
along there, just following it round. And because the silver only have caught those raised areas, this will neaten those up really quickly. So that's the case on there. When it comes to this part just here, it's all about layering towards the middle, leaving the recesses in the corners. So going up around there like that. And then we've also got the pipes along here. And to do these, just make sure you don't have much paint on your brush, approach it from the side and just skim along like that so the brush can only catch those raised areas just to neaten them up there like that. With that black neatened up, the next thing to do is to finish off the silver plating on the armour. And for this, what we're going to do is pick out the edges with a highlight. And what we're going to do for this, first of all, is use some iron hand steel. Then we want to go to a very bright silver. So for this, I'm going to use some Stormho silver. But first of all, we need iron hand steel. And to apply it, I'm going to be using that small airbrush again. And with this, what we're looking to do is to emphasise the edges on the plates. So kind of edge highlighting, really. Although these edges are already standing out a bit from the dry brushing. What we're doing here is just exaggerating them a little bit more to give the impression of sharpness to give a clean finish to them. So what we need to do is just make sure the paint's nicely thinned down, just test it on your palette to make sure it's flowing well from your brush, and make sure your brush isn't overloaded as well. You really don't need very much on here, so that's what I'm using the tissue for to get rid of the excess paint. So with that done, all we've got to do is start applying it to these edges, and all you need to do is look for them. For example, this one going around the top of this armour plate just here. You can see that edge is already standing out a bit, but using the side of the brush, what I'm going to do is just skim along that part there to make that silver a little bit brighter, and you can see it just helps it jump out a little bit more. So now it's just a matter of looking for these edges and just following them all the way around like this using the side of your brush, just to get that nice finish to this detail. In addition with this colour, it's a good idea to do some layering on the blade as well because it's quite dark at this point, but adding a layer of this colour over the top will just make it much brighter and help give the impression of sharpness. With that highlight applied, you can see it's made a nice difference helping the edges of the armour stand out. But what we need to do now is add a bit of Stormhost Silver, mainly for doing the blade, for which again we need to do a highlight using the side of the brush, following along those sharp edges to help them stand out a little bit more. So for example, along there and down there as well. Now in addition, if you want to, you can use this as a fine highlight on the armour plates. And if you do, look for the parts that stand out the most, for example this bit here, and just skim along that part to make it a little bit brighter. And with that, all that silver is complete, and now we can move on to finishing off the undersuit. And for this, we're going to go for two highlights because this is a character piece. And so for this, we're going to start out with a dark grey, which is Eschen grey, and then a much lighter grey using Administratum grey. But first of all, we need Eschen grey, and to apply it, I'm again going to use that small airbrush. And for this, what we're looking for are the most defined parts on these black details that we base coated earlier and layered earlier as well, in fact. And so there's not many to do really. But as ever, just make sure your paint is nicely thinned down, and then what we're looking for are the parts that stand out. Now on the undersuit that means we're looking for ridges in them. So for example on this part that we've got just here on the knee, what I'm looking at is doing lines across areas like that and just there. So kind of in a downward motion looking for the parts that are raised up and just gently skimming across them like that to get a highlight on those raised areas. Now in addition we've got these cables on the helmet and for this I'm just going to make sure I don't have much paint on the brush. Then approach it using the side of the bristles and just skim along like that to just catch the raised areas. Once that's done, we're then ready to retrace our steps to the finer highlight with the lighter grey. So here I'm using Administratum grey, and what I'm looking to do is just paint a thinner line towards the raised areas that would catch the light the most. So for example on the knee, it's just a few little lines like that across that area there. Then when it comes to the pipes, just make sure you've got even less paint in your brush and just very lightly skim across the top. The body glove is now complete and we can move on to the next step which is to paint in Frank's green irradiated skin. And for this the first thing we need to do is to base coat it with a medium green. And for this I'm going to use some Lauren Forest. Now the brush to use really varies depending on what part you're doing. I'm going to start out with my regiment brush which is good for the majority of it but definitely have a smaller one on hand because you'll need that around his neck. It can be quite tricky to get to that area. But all you've got to do is as ever just get your paint ready with that little touch of water. And then it's just a matter of blocking in these areas. And you will need to do two thin coats here, but do take your time because as I said, it can be a bit tricky to reach some of these areas. Just make sure you go around getting them all. Now it's mostly his arms that are visible and his hands, but there is a bit around his neck, which you can see just in there. And also don't forget there's some on his back just in there as well. Mm -hmm. 
Once you've blocked in all that skin, the next thing to do is to apply a wash to it. And to give it that really kind of lurid green appearance, what we want is a really strong green here. So I'm going to be using some Beltan Green from Citadel. And to apply it once again, I'm going to be using that regiment brush for most of it. But have the smaller one on hand for around the neck. And with this, all you got to do is get some ready. I'd recommend using a palette this time to help control how much you're putting on at once. Because we want to focus this just on the skin and avoid getting any of that armour. So having it from the palette to draw from really helps control how much is on your brush. You can always get rid of excess on for some tissue if you need to as well. And all you've got to do is start painting then all over the skin, just letting it run across the whole area so it settles in the recessed details and gives some definition to the flesh. Once the wash is completely dry, the next thing to do is some layering on the skin to start to brighten it up. And for this, we're going to return to Lauren Forest and re-establish it as the mid-tone, but this time when applying it, go straight for a small brush. So I'm using a small layer brush for this. Because what we need here is lots of control because we're looking to avoid those recessed details when more of that wash settled. So what you got to do is, as ever, get the paint thinned down and ready. But this time as you apply it, look for the larger, more open spaces for it. So for example, on this arm just here, we're looking at this bicep. What I'm going to do is start applying it to the flat area around here. Where I get close to these recesses, which is just there, I'm just going to skip past it and carry on again on the other side. And once again, just here, because we've got these darker lines now from the wash, just going to skip past those and carry on again just past them there, like that. With that layering done, we can now move on to highlighting the skin. And for this, we're going to be returning to Lauren Forest, but also introducing a brighter green. And for this, I'm going to be using some Scarsnit green. Now, after that, we're going to move on to adding a very fine highlight to the skin. And for this, we need a flesh color, so I'm going to use some Cadian flesh tone here. But first of all, we need Lauren Forest and Scarsnit green. And you see, what I'm going to do here is mix the two together to start to create a smooth highlight on the flesh. So on the palette, I'm just going to start fresh with two dollops of these colors. So a little bit of Lauren Forest, which I'm just going to put just there. There we go, and then a bit of Scarsnick Green. Now I'm going to put these next to each other on the palette so I can start to mix them together. And this way I can adjust the tone as I go along. So there we go, get a good dollop of that, there like that. And then start to bring them together in the middle. So this way, you see, you can go either direction to increase the colour in one way or the other, depending on what you want. But at the moment what I'm looking for is something in between, slightly more towards the Lauren Forest side. So we're looking at a colour kind of like that for this initial stage. Then what I'm going to do with this colour is kind of thinly glaze it onto the muscles but towards the top of each one and that's relative towards the top of the model because this is going to be kind of a light source coming down that's where we want the flesh to be lighter. So what we need to do then is just get some of that ready, thin it down with that bit of water as ever so it's nice and smooth and you can see I'm testing it on the palette here see how translucent it is and that's looking pretty good to me that's the kind of effect that we want to bring in on the muscle on the arms. So. What we need to do then is start applying this, and I'm going to start on this arm here as an example. So using my small airbrush, what I'm looking to do is to apply this towards the top of this muscle around about there, just thinly, going just around about halfway down like that, and then continuing it, following these raised areas, so a bit along there, and a bit along there like that, bringing it down to that point there, and just kind of taking it around with a second coat then just to make it a little bit stronger. Now if you find the transitions a bit too harsh, what you can always do is just go back to Lauren Forest on its own. I've still got some from the previous step just there. And all you do will be to get a little bit of that and just apply it beneath it. And that will just ease that transition between the two. But you can see what it's doing is starting to create a lighter tone towards the top of that muscle. And then all you do is essentially carry this on around all of an area like this. So following all that arm all the way around, going onto the muscle onto the back. So we're looking at the top of this one just here. Once again, just thinly applying it towards the top along there, around about halfway to there. Now once you've done that across all the green skin, what you then do is make it a little bit lighter by adding a bit more Scarsnick into the mix. So that's what we'll do now just to concentrate on this part to show you what to do. So I'm get a bit more Scarsnick now, just bring that into the mix. There we go, so it's a little bit lighter, and then repeat this process. So this time it's at the top of the muscle but just a little bit higher up now, so going to around about there. And again just around there, and following it round you know, on all these parts that are standing out. So I'm always looking for the curvature of the muscle and just exaggerating it towards the top. So again on the back just there, just going to bring it around to round about there like that. And then a bit more Scarsnick Green and you just go up to the point where you're just painting pure Scarsnick Green, at which point we just want to bring this just to the very top, so around about there like that. So you see by doing this what I'm doing is creating the illusion of it being lighter at the top and just creates the impression of light falling on these areas. So now it's just a matter of repeating this across all of the green skin, just taking your time and remember if that transition ever becomes too harsh, you can always go back to Lauren Forest and just apply that from the bottom and that will ease it all together.
Once you're finished with that stage, we're then ready to move on to Cadian Flesh Tone. And with this, what we're going to do is add a very fine highlight to the top of each of these muscles. So first of all, let's apply it thinly, just like in the previous step. So kind of glazing it along the top of each one, just to give the hint of a more fleshy colour like that, just to mark this out as skin and a more organic material. Now, in addition with this colour, what we can do is add some finer definition to some of the sharper detailed areas. For example, on the hand here, you can see all the tendons and the knuckles and things. Just using this colour, not quite so diluted now, just follow along the tops of these areas, just to help them stand out a little bit more. And with that highlight applied, we've now got a really nice tone on the skin. However, it doesn't look quite lurid enough yet for radioactive flesh. So what we want to do now is to glaze it with yellow to really give that element to it. And to do this, I'm going to use some Nasdrag yellow, which is one of Citadel's contrast paints, which is going to give it that glazed effect, give it a slight yellow tint, but also it's going to ease all those highlights together as well. Now to get this ready, what you need to do is to get some onto a palette, because here we need to thin it down with some water, because straight out the pot, this is a bit too strong. And you can see certainly on the palette just how strong that colour is just there. It's almost brown, in fact, when it gets thick. So just get some water and dilute it down so it's nice and thin. We're looking for something a little bit more like that before we apply it to the miniature. And with this, what we need to do is to apply a thin coat all over the flesh. So just change brush as you need to. I'm starting out with my regiment brush here because I'm going for an arm first of all, but go for a smaller one around the neck. And all you do is apply a thin coat all across the skin and you can see straight away just what a difference that makes. Looks far more radioactive and super mutant like. And with that, the skin is complete. And now we can move on to the next step, which is to paint in the eye lenses. And for the bright red here, what we need to do first of all is establish a strong red. So for this, I'm going to use some Ephiston red. Then we need a very bright red to finish it off. And for this, I'm going to use a little bit of Wild Rider red. But first of all, we need Mephiston red. And so to apply it, it's a matter of going back to your small brush once again. So I'm back to my small airbrush from Citadel here. All you got to do is get a small amount ready, just checking it on your brush and making sure, and this is really important, making sure you've got a fine tip on there because these eyes are very small. So just use the palette to help do that. Just bring the brush together, just twisting the brush slightly as you move it along. And then all you got to do is approach it from the side of the eye. So you can see we've got one just in here. Just approach across the side of it like that and just very gently paint in the middle of it, going close to the edge where it's darker, but it's leaving that darker line where it separates this red from the metal. But we're looking at just doing that area just there. Once you have that initial red on there, the next thing to do is to move on to a brighter red. So here I'm using some Wild Rider red and just apply a small amount of this towards the front of each eye lens. So just there. And with that, the eyes are complete. And now we can move on to an effect which is actually optional, and that's to put some blood on the sword on his forearm. Now to do this, I'm going to use some blood for the Blood God from Citadel. And to apply it, go for a medium-sized brush again. So I'm back to my regiment brush for this. And the important thing to understand about applying a paint like this is that you need to put it on in the direction of the impact as to where he's hit something. So in this case, I'm going to be looking for the cutting edge and kind of almost flicking it on from that direction. So I've got some on the palette, all prepared. And what I'm looking to do then is to look for the cutting edge on this blade, which you can see is actually on the inside side of it, it's that little sort of beveled side we've got just there. So turn the model so that you're going to be painting from that direction and I'm going to be applying it on in a kind of flicking motion like that going in the direction of it. So I'm going to start around here and just start applying it like that. And you can see it's very easy then to get a nice realistic appearance of blood splattering up the sword. And all you do is go along one side until you're happy then repeat it on the other side. And if you want the colour to be a little bit stronger just let this coat dry and apply a second coat in the exact same way. And here we have the blade with that blood applied to it. And well, now we can move on to the next detail, which is another optional detail. And that is on the back of the arm of the little nuclear reactor. There's a nuclear symbol on there. And if you want to paint that in, then now's the time to do it. And for this, what you need is a yellow, first of all. And I'm going to use some Avalanche Sunset. Then after that, you need a black. And for this, I'm going to be using some matte black from the Army Painter. But first, we need that Avalanche Sunset. And to apply it, go for your small brush again. So I'm back to my small layer brush. And with this, what we're looking to do is to kind of create the missing parts of a circle going around this symbol. So to do that, all you've got to do is just identify the little recessed areas in between these raised parts. So you can see it's kind of these three triangles that we've got almost. And with this colour, all you've got to do is apply it into this little recessed area around here, just as I say, completing the circle. So it's like doing a little pie segment, really, just a little part there like that. Now, if you do happen to run into the recesses of this area, you can see I'm carefully avoiding them. But if you do happen to get into those, just add, add a little bit of Agrax Surshade into those recesses just to re-establish the raised area. Once you finish that yellow, then all you need is a small amount of matte black. And with this, all you've got to do is paint the raised parts of the symbol.
And there we are, the nuclear symbol is done, and now we can move on to the next step, which is actually to apply the little enclave American flag, which goes in his armour just on there. Now you could paint something like this by hand, but if you wanted to, bear in mind it's very difficult because it's such a small symbol to do. So what I recommend you do instead is get hold of a transfer. And the ideal thing to use here is actually from Warlord Games, and is this one here. This is one of their US Airborne transfer sheets, which you can buy separately, and you can see it's perfect because it's got loads of American flags on here, which are the absolute perfect size for what we need. Lots of other markings you could use elsewhere as well, like sergeant markings and medics and things like that. But having one of these will cover you for your whole army if you decide you want to put more of these flags on the armour. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to apply one of these onto the armour and when we come back we'll then paint the base. And there we are, the flag's been applied to the armour, and so now we can move on to painting the base. And the first thing to do here is to paint the texture of the ground. And for this, the perfect colour is actually one of Citadel's texture paints, and it's a Grell and Badland, because this looks just like the wasteland that you see in the video games for Fallout. Now, as I mentioned, this is one of the texture paints, which is a bonus really here, because it's going to add just a bit more texture to the ground. But to apply it, what you need to do is get hold of an older brush. I've got an old monster brush here to apply this. All I'm going to do is get a good amount of this on the brush, and then just find an open space on the base. So around the front here is just fine. And it's just a matter of applying it to this area and then moving it around like this to cover the whole thing to get that colour over it with that additional texture as a bonus. Now when you get close to other details such as the Death Claws body here, just go up to but not onto it, so just kind of push it up there like that and do just the same around Frank's feet too. Once you've applied this give it plenty of time to dry, it'll take around about half an hour when we're applying it this thickly. With that texture applied, we're now ready to paint in the Death Claw, and for this what we need is three colours to base coat it. First of all, for its skin we're going to use some Gorthor Brown, and then for the horns we're going to pick them out with an off black, so here we need some Corvus Black. Finally there's the inside of its mouth, and for this I'm going to use a little bit of Screamer Pink. But first of all we need that Gorthor Brown, and to apply it to begin with I'm going to stick with that monster brush, but it's a good idea to have a smaller brush on hand when you get some of the finer detail on it. But with this all you've got to do is make sure you've got that paint thinned down as ever, and it's just a matter of blocking in its entire body. And it's when you're getting close to the areas around where the foot is, around there, that's where you want to go for a smaller brush, but for the rest of it it's just a matter of blocking all of the flesh in. Once that skin's painted, you're then ready to move on to base coating the horns using Corvus Black. And for this I switch to a medium sized brush, so I'm using my regiment brush to give more control when it's getting close to the skin. And then finally all we need to do is to paint the inside of the Death Claw's mouth using Screamer Pink. With that all done, the next thing to do is to apply some wash to that base to really bring everything together and start to give some definition to it too. And so for this I'm actually going to be using two washes at the same time. First we need a dark brown, so I'm going to go back to Agrax Earthshade here, but also we want to add a hint of green in there to give a slightly sort of weathered appearance, slightly mossy appearance to things. And for this I'm going to use some Athonian Camo Shade. But first of all what we need to do is to get some of this paint onto the base, and I'm going to be using my monster brush to apply this. And you can see I've got both paints ready because I'm going to be applying them both at the same time, and I'm going to let them mix as I paint them on. First of all I'm going to start with the brown because this is for over the death claw and also the texture. So for example starting it around here in this arm just applying it over that death claw like that so it gives some nice definition. But when you get to the texture of the ground as you're applying it to these areas just add in a little bit of that green as you go. So a little bit of Bithonian Camo Shade just let it mix in the base and you can see it just really contributes to that washed out appearance perfect for the fallout wasteland. Once that wash is completely dry we're then ready to highlight all that texture on the base. And for this we need two colours. First of all some Bane Blade Brown which is going to be used for the Death Claw skin, and then we're going to move on to a bone colour for which I'm going to be using Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter, and this is to highlight the whole thing and bring it all together. But first of all we need that Bane Blade Brown, and to apply it I'm going back to that small dry brush from Citadel, and using this just need to get a small amount ready, using the tissue to work it into the bristles and get rid of the excess paint. So I really don't want very much left on here before we apply it to the miniature. We just got it down to about that point, just testing it on the texture of the tissue. You're then ready to start applying it to the skin of the Death Claw, and all you've got to do is just start rubbing it back and forth across the texture, just to catch those raised areas, such as along the arm there, like that. Now, in addition, if you want to, you can use this to have some dust on Frank's feet, and for this, all you've got to do is just lightly dry brush it across the bottom, like that, just to build up a little bit of that colour towards the bottom. Once that's done we're then ready to move on to Skeleton Bone, and this is going to be a light dry brush across all the texture of the base, so every detail to bring it together. And I'm using an Army Painter Hobby dry brush here, and that's specifically because the bristles on this brush are a bit stiffer than on the Citadel one, which means it's better suited just to catching the raised edges and textures. So you can see it's a lighter effect with this one than what I'd get with the Citadel one. 
And there we are, the painting of the base is complete. And I just want to quickly point out, I also added a little bit more of that skeleton bone on the teeth, the death claw there, just to finish that off too. And with that done, we're now going to add a weathering effect into the armour in the form of a little bit of rust. And to do this, we're going to be using an enamel paint, and I've got it just here. This is Rust Streaks from AK Interactive, so a really nice colour for what we're doing here. And as I mentioned, this is an enamel paint, so to use it, what you also need is some white spirit or thinners. And I've actually got two bottles of this. First of all, I've got some white spirit, also from AK Interactive, and this is what I'm going to be using shortly just to dilute the colour on the model to get the effect. And I've also got some thinners here from Humbrol, so that's this bottle here. And I've got it in specifically a different shape bottle here, so that I know that this one I'm going to be using to clean the brush, because remember with enamels you'll need some white spirit to clean your brush. So that's what this one's for. It means I don't accidentally get some colour in the other one, which I'm going to be using later, as you shall see, to thin out the paint and get the effect. But first of all, we need to add that rust on there, so rust streaks. All you got to do is get some of this ready. Now to apply it, go for an older brush that you keep specifically for using this kind of paint. And for this fine detail work here, I've got a detail brush from the Army Painter. So here it is, one I've had for quite a while. And with this, all I'm going to do is get a small amount of this onto the brush. So I'm just going directly from the pot here. There we go. And using this, what I want to do is start adding it into areas where I want to have the effect of rust streaking down the armour. So think about where water would collect and then run down. For example, on the shoulder plate just here, it would collect around the rivets. We've got the top there. So all you do is just run it into some of those rivet areas there like that, and then just bring it down. Now for this first step, it doesn't have to be super neat. You really just have to get the colour where you want it. So just apply it there like that, and then allow it to dry. Once you have those streaks marked in, the next thing to do is to get the white spirit. So this is the clean one from AK Interactive here. And using that same brush, all you do is just add some of the spirits around those streaks that you put on. And what this will do is reactivate that enamel paint and allow you to manipulate it because it just etches into it. And now I can start running down like this and you can see it just cuts into that colour and allows me to manipulate it to get a more realistic effect on the armour. So you see, really simple to do. You can play around with it as much as you like. You can even add more of that enamel colour on later on if you want to, but it's really just a matter of working away at it until you're happy. Now once you've done this, you're then ready to add any grass tufts you might want onto the base, and mountain tufts from the Army Painter are absolutely perfect for Fallout. And with that done, all you then got to do is to paint the rim of the base. And this can be any colour you like, but I'm going to go for matte black to frame the miniature. And here we have the completed Frank Horrigan ready to enact the will of the Enclave on the Wasteland. So as you've seen in painting this miniature, there's two main features of it. There's the armour and also the green skin. And these details are loads of fun to paint because there's lots of little textures you can pick out and you can really vary the tones if you want to as well. Now remember, everything we've done in this video can easily be applied to loads of other miniatures besides this one. So the Enclave in general, and also Super Mutants, but also for other games too. For example, for Warhammer 40,000, you could easily use lots of this on Chaos Space Marines, but lots of other factions as well. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video. Have fun using these techniques, and we'll see you again very soon.